So far in this lesson, we've explored using the Paths panel along with the Pen tool, moving into layers, creating vector masks. What about converting a shape in the Paths panel into a selection? Now, with all the beauty of vector, you might ask the question, why? Well, there are advantages and things you can do to a selection that you can't do to a vector. So open up Curve Palo Blues right there. If you did not save the one that we did in the previous lesson, don't forget that the finished version is here that we did. But this one up here is the one we worked on. If you saved it, it basically has a vector mask attached to it. I want you to click on that mask and press the delete button. Get rid of the mask until you see this. The actual path is still here. Now that's what we want. Now there are a couple of ways that we can convert this into a selection. Actually, there's about five. We'll look at about two or three. One way would be to click Work Path right up here and click this button down here. And voila, you have a selection based on the strength of that vector. I'm going to press Undo. Love that key. Another way, simpler, a shortcut, would be to come up here and hold down the Control key and click on it and you get the same thing. Let me get rid of that and show you one more way that gives you options. If I come over here and select the work path, and let's say I still have my pen tool selected, and that's important because that changes stuff up here, you will see an option that says selection. If I click that button, I get options. One of them is, do you want a feather on the selection? Would you like it anti-alias, which is usually a good thing? And is this part of something bigger, like you have another selection that you want to add, subtract, or intersect with? Now, we don't have to change any of these things here, except I would recommend anti-alias. But if you do click that one up there, you do get options. Click OK. However you've done it, you're going to wind up with that. So let's go back to Layers. And this time, what we're going to do is make sure we have Kripalu Blue's copy from the original file selected and click the Layer Mask button down here without the Control key. And we create a standard run-of-the-mill, I suppose, Layer Mask. But this is where the fun starts. If you double-click on that Layer Mask, it opens up the Properties panel. Now, we saw this before, but we're not working Vector. We're working Raster with Paint. You do have the same two options here. You have the ability to change the density of the mask, which actually sometimes can be fun. Let's take that back to 100%. You can feather it, but here you have more options. For example, you can invert the mask. Now, these options weren't there when we did a vector mask. Let me go ahead and put that back again. You have color range. Now, we're going to get into color range a little bit more when we get to selection, but it allows us to modify the mask by selecting colors, either over here, and I can click the plus sign over here, and change and actually make a completely different selection based on sample colors. Let's not worry about that one right now. Let's go into Mask Edge. I like this. This has similar features to Refine Edge. As a matter of fact, it's basically almost the same thing. For example, you can get into Edge Detection and go into Turn On Smart Radius, put our radius at about a 0.5, actually a 0.05 for me. And I'm going to get in here with a very small brush and start actually painting on the edge, half on, half off. Now, as you do, it begins to, or attempts to, refine the edge. In other words, I'm saying, look in this area again, would you? And see if you can make that mask any better against that blue flower, against that background. And every time you paint it, it tries to do a little bit of a better job. Once you've done that, you've got things like smoothing, if you want to smooth it out. You've got Feather, if you want to use that, right here. Contrast kind of helps to solidify the edge, and you can shift the edge if you want to by going one way or the other. You can work with decontaminate colors. Now, in the case of this image, you're not going to see much of any difference because the colors are so distinct between the flower and the background, and you can say then output that to what? Now you've got, well, just make it another selection. I want to use it in another layer. Or how about a new layer with a layer mask? Let's do that one. 
Click OK. Now we have two of these things. We have our original, and we have this one, which is slightly subtly different than the previous one. We've refined it using the properties up here. There's probably one more area we could look at that you might in some cases find useful in using vector paths, but we'll cover that in the next lesson. So on to the next.